Hi everybody and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Venetia and I am the Woolly Worker. And usually I do the Woolly Worker Knitting Podcast, but today's episode is a special episode and I'm going to do a roundup of everything I've knit in 2022, which is also why the background is different. I've been trying really hard to find a place in my flat where I could comfortably sit down, but also model some of the pieces that I've made um, so that there wouldn't be too much of editing to do. So this is where we're going to be sitting today. It's it's not the best, I know it's a bit cluttered, but it's just the easiest for me to film. So I hope that everything will be fine, lighting and sound wise. I've really been wanting to make this video since, well, since the 1st of January, basically. I love watching those videos with other people and I thought it would be really fun to do mine, but it's been more complex than I thought it would because it requires quite a lot of planning, I guess. There's a lot of things I want to communicate and really make sure I get across. So this also might be quite a long video. I think it likely will be a, a two-parter because I've decided I was going to show my garments, but also accessories that I've made. And everything will be timestamped in the description so you can skip ahead if you want to. It was difficult for me to decide on a format that I liked. I was doing a lot of research by watching a lot of other people's videos and I think what I prefer, yeah, is just to go in chronological order. So I'm going to include everything that I've finished since January. So nothing that I started this year but haven't finished. And like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to include garments and accessories. There weren't that many gifts, so uh, I obviously don't have them if I've gifted them, but I might just mention them. The other thing to mention is that all of those projects, absolutely all of them, are on my Ravelry. So you can follow me on Ravelry at The Woolly Worker or Instagram at The Woolly Worker, and that's where you can find more photos. But on Ravelry, you'll definitely find all the information about the yarn, the yardage, the colorways, more sort of, you know, thoughts I was having about the pattern as I was making it. But I'll try and remember as much as I can. I have my laptop next to me, I hope you can't hear it. And I'm gonna be looking on Rivalry at the same time. And the way I want this to go is that for every item, I will talk about the pattern that it is, the yarn I've used, how the process was, did I make any mistakes? And did I make any modifications to the pattern? Would I make this again? And if I did, would I change anything? And then do I wear this item and is it comfortable, you know, uh, is it soft? And then lastly, I thought it'd be interesting as well to tell you the price. So I don't know this information yet as of today, but what I'll do is when I'm editing this video, I'll make sure to put a little text at the bottom where I say uh, how much an item costs. And I think what I'll do is, you know, if I use eight and a half balls, I'll just put the price of the nine balls that I have bought. Um, but if I had two extra balls that I never used, then I'm not going to include the price of that. So basically I'll round up, but uh, I won't include extra balls that weren't used, if that makes sense. So I thought that could be interesting, especially if we're watching this video maybe five or ten years down the line and inflation makes us all wish that we were back in 2023. So anyway, I hope that this is going to be an enjoyable video. I'm really excited to film it. I was putting it off for reasons I've mentioned and that will come up later, but we're doing it. It's happening. And I hope that you've got maybe a, a drink. I've got caffeine today. We've got a little coffee. And that you maybe have some knitting that you want to get some progress on. I think, like I said, it's going to be a long one. So get comfortable. And yeah, let's just get into it. So the first thing I made this year was this mock fingerless mitt. And they were a gift from my mom. So I don't have them. I... I uh, started these just before the end of the year and I finished them a week later on January 8th and they were made with a pattern from this book which is Knitting from Fair Isle by Matthew Ventrelin and I've made a few books from this I've made a few patterns from this book which I will show um, this year and it's a great book it's got lots of nice patterns it's got really nice colorways I will say that there's a few mistakes in charts every now and then and there haven't really been published erratas so the book has a few sweater patterns, but I'm kind of reluctant to try sweaters from this if I know that, for example, the hat patterns had some mistakes. So what I might do is, you know, steal the color work motif and plug that into another sweater at some point or something like that. But I really do like the colorway 
options that this book gives and as you can see throughout the video I have made a lot of things from this book. So those myths which I will show on screen were made with scraps so it's a mix of Jameson of Shetland spin rift and also knit picks. Um, they're really nice, they're very sort of traditional motifs and colors. You work them in the round and then you work flat for the thumb opening, so back and forth for that length of the thumb, then you join back in the round and you finish the ribbing and then you pick up the stitches and add the thumb afterwards. And that kind of thumb construction I think looks nice, as you can see on the photo it's like a nice perpendicular thumb, but I think comfort wise it really depends on how your hand works because some people's thumb I guess starts lower or higher, um, but that whole like that opening really forces you to to have the thumb opening where it is and I guess you could always change that if you know you've got a different hand you can make the opening wider or lower whatever you want but I just made it as described I ran out of yarn of the main color while I was doing the second mitt so I had to order some and then finish the mitten afterwards which delayed me a little bit but that's fine the way I did those was kind of working on both of them at the same time and that was to make sure that my tension would be even and not change dramatically between the first and the second and that way it was also a bit more motivating because when I finished the first one I had already done a lot of progress on the second one which helps for second sock or second mitten syndrome. I blocked them and that yarn is really nice when you block it, it really evens out the color work. Color work in small circumferences can be tricky, especially if you're using magic loop. I can't remember if I was using magic loop or the two circular method, where basically you get two circular needles of the same size and you kind of work back and forth on, on these. There's videos and tutorials on that. I haven't really done that since, I think I just prefer magic loop. And I think at first I started them with a certain needle size, but I frogged it once I got into the wrist because I realized I think it was too large and I didn't like it. So I went down the needle size and used my three millimeter needles and I was happier with that. So that's something that I found a lot with socks and mittens is I start it and when I get, you know, a couple of inches down, I realize it's usually too large. So I have to go down some needle sizes, especially with color work. But yeah, so they were gifted to my mom. And I think that's all there is to say about that. So the next project, I started it the next day, January 9th, and it's this long hat, and it's also Fair Isle. And this is also from the same book by Matty Ventrelin, Knitting from Fair Isle. And it's in just like the colorway kind of black and white, but there's also some variations that the book offers where you can make stripes like different colors to get a completely different effect. The book basically offers you three colorways for each pattern. And normally you're actually supposed to have a little um, pom-pom or like fringe cap thing looking, but I never really got a chance to do that. Um, so I made the size M. The thing with this is that I started it in January, but then I ran out of white. And this is Jimison, like Shetland Spindrift. It's, it's not that rare, but a lot of the shops, you know, that I usually frequent don't offer it so I was never able to get my hands on a spare ball and the shops that do sell Jameson then you know I didn't want to just buy one ball I was kind of waiting to maybe get a bigger order so that it would uh, make more sense and yeah it took me uh, until July to actually get a ball of white so in July I finally finished this hat and I haven't even woven the ends to be honest I mean this is gonna be a spoiler alert I never wear this. I think it's just not really my style, to be honest. Like, it looks gorgeous. I'm really, really proud of this. As you can see, like, the color work is very, very even. It's just not something that I wear. I mean, <laughs> it's supposed to be this kind of, like, slouchy um, beanie with, like, the fabric at the bottom. And it is supposed to have, like, the pom-pom, like I said. So I don't really wear it, but I'm happy I made it. Um, I wouldn't really change anything. I guess I could go down the needle size to make it just a little bit more snug. It looks like it would be really warm because because it's fair isle, it's double layered. So you got all the floats inside, which offer this second layer of warmth. 
Uh, I used the colorway Heron and Natural White. I think Heron was actually a leftover that I had from something else. And I played Yarn Chicken, but I did win. So I ran out of white, but I didn't run out of main color. And if I did that again, I probably would just do like a different colorway to be more interesting. But I don't think I would do this again because I don't wear it and it's not my style. Um, so yeah. Oh, I forgot to put something on the previous project, but I'll just put the price that this turned out to be on the screen. But yeah, it was really satisfying to finally get this done after it being hibernating for so long. And to put it in context, I started a new job last year in January and it was very, very demanding. So I actually didn't knit that much between January and July. And then in July, when I finally had settled a bit and took back, like, took up knitting again, then I started knitting way much more. So from January to July, there weren't any finished objects basically. And now that we're entering summer, that's when I started knitting uh, a lot more. So the next project is going to be the underwing mitts. And it's something that I started a very long time ago, last September. So September, 2021 and I finished them on July 14th. And the underwing mitts are a pattern from Erika Heiser. And I talked about a pattern I had done from her in my uh, video where I round up everything I knitted in like 2021. So these are the mittens. Ooh. So it's really, really nice, it's like a moth basically. And you duplicate stitch that little orange bit. So it's just like one by one color work. And this is the back and you've got that like nice little circle pattern and the moons. I don't know if you can see, but one of the mittens is bigger than the other one. And to be honest, I actually have done three of these mittens because, or even more, I had to start this over and over and over because they kept on being too big. And I actually had to order the pair of needles that I ended up using, which is a US 00, so 1.75 millimeters. And I made this one, the big one. And then by the time I made the second one, it got like tighter and neater. So I, I prefer this one, obviously, this is the right hand. So I'll put them on. I still haven't woven the ends. I don't wear these as much because I'm a little sad about the size different, difference. Um, they're quite nice. So it's like a thumb gusset increase thing, which espouses the shape of your hand a little better than uh, the previous mitts that I've just talked about. I think they're perfect at the hand, but it's a bit too much extra fabric at the wrist. Oh, but this one, yeah, this one is perfect. It really, really is nice and it doesn't have extra excess fabric. This one is a little bit more wonky, but yeah, I think they're really pretty. And I mean, I have worn them out a couple of times like when I'm just like going to the shop or something outside. The yarn I used for this is Knit Picks palette. And I used the colorways Stellar Heather and Oyster Heather for the main color and Kumquat Heather for the orange. And I really like Knit Picks. I guess I don't use it that much. I know it's more of a thing in the US. There is a UK website where you can just order it and you don't have to pay for delivery like fees or anything. But I guess I just prefer Jimison and Smith, which are kind of the equivalent of that um, catchy toothy yarn for small circumference color work. But I know Knit Picks is a very popular and affordable option. So I'll put the price uh, of how much these cost. So yeah, the process of these was very frustrating because of the size issue, but the color work was really nice. I guess there are quite a lot of long floats when you're making that big moth at the start, but you can't really see where I trapped the float. So I'm pretty happy with the result. I'm pretty happy with duplicate stitch. It was my first time doing that. Um, there's some videos online on how to do it. But yeah, now that I'm seeing them on camera, I, I want to wear them more because like I said before, for my other pair of Erika Hauser mittens, they feel like a work of art on your hands and it really feels like it can showcase your knitting abilities really well. Like, you know, I'm a knitter, I made these, it's great. So the next project is a big one, it's a sweater. And that's the first sweater then that I made this year. <clears throat> the first two sweaters I had made in my knitting journey, I talked about in my previous video, and they were color work sweaters in superwash wool uh, by Jennifer Steingas patterns. And they were great. You know, it was, it was very satisfying and gratifying to make a sweater, but I kind of had 
been put off by this but then I learned about petite knit and I learned about that like fingering and mohair trend and raglan construction so I decided to make this no frills sweater and it took me about three weeks so I started in July finished in August made this on four millimeter needles I actually did a modification I made the color like a double folded color uh, and just by you know I knitted the color twice as long and then knitted it together with a cast on edge and then continued down and I used drops flora in gray color four and drops kid silk in ash gray color 22 and I'll get the sweater so here it is a really nice gray color um, nice and fluffy so I'll put it on just now so there we go so and um, people have complained as well with this sweater the no frills is that you can see the t-shirt you're wearing underneath a lot of the time um which if you're wearing a shirt like to go to work i think that would be fine but if you're wearing a t-shirt you might not like that i guess the sleeves are maybe a tad long the length is nice i feel like if i want to i could tuck it in um, but also it's not like too bad it's hitting me at a nice point so yeah I think it's nice I was really proud of doing that the only problem with this sweater I will say is that I use drops kit silk and this is something that really annoys me because otherwise I would really like this sweater but right now as I'm wearing it this is really itchy on my bare arms I guess I could be wearing a long sleeve top and obviously the t-shirt here is helping me not get annoyed at the neck but the arms as well I also did a twisted rib on this I think it gives a nice neat looking edge it's such a shame I never wore this I blocked it and everything and it didn't soften up and it put me off on knitting it put me off knitting with mohair but since then I've realized that it was just the fact that it was drop skit silk and not all mohairs are created equal and that I could just try different things. So ever since knitting this, I've not used drops uh, kit silk anymore. You can see a bit more of my thoughts and um, tips on my Ravelry page. I basically linked every single tutorial that I've used, like for picking up the underarm stitches, for example. I'm really proud of the technique I used to do that really leaves no gap whatsoever, which is a problem with raglans usually. So happy with that. There's German short rows. I used a tubular bind off, doing the two set of rounds that Petite Net usually advocates for. And I'll put the price um, of how much that sweater cost just here below. But yeah, if I, I would definitely make this pattern again, the no frills. There's so many different ways that you could do this um, using um, merino or rustic wools or DK or finger and mohair, brushed alpaca, hand dyed yarn, like the options are endless. So I'll make this again 100%, but just not with kid silk. The next thing I've made was another hat and it's another kept hat from that same book. So here it is here, it's in that gradient colorway. And I bought those yarns, uh, it's Jameson of Shetland again. I bought these at the Oxford Yarn Store and I'll put that in the description. And I went there for my boyfriend's sister's graduation uh, back in August. So we went there and I went to the yarn store and it, it was such a good shop. It also had um, Sunless Garn, which I'll talk about in the next project. But yeah, I got all the colorways to do this that the book was recommending. And the interesting thing about this hat, basically, right, is you can see it's a folded brim, which normally shows the reverse side of a, a color work. And yet the color work is showing the right way. So the way that you do this is basically you're starting off on the reverse side of the hat and you're doing your color way and then you turn your work. Oh, it's kind of hard to explain, but basically this is what it looks like. So wrong side ribbing right side so when you flip it it shows the right side on both and it's too big i'm gonna be straight with you it's too big i don't wear it it also is supposed to have like some sort of hat or pom-pom uh at the bottom but i haven't done that 
uh, as you can see, there's there's really no way of wearing this in a... Well, I guess that's a bit better. I don't know if you can see at the back. It just, again, feels like a nice way of displaying and showcasing my skills. I'm super proud of the color work. I love the way that it looks. I learned about color dominance and consistency in, in holding the yarn at the left or the right. I love the colors. There's some like oatmeals, grays, blues, like this orange. Although I was a bit annoyed having to only use, you know, there's literally two lines of orange in the entire pattern and I bought a whole kind of, of that. But I'll make some mittens, it's fine. Um, so yeah, it's too big. If I did it again, but I wouldn't because it's not my style, I probably would do a different colorway just for fun. And I would definitely make either a size smaller, the pattern comes in three different sizes, or I would use um, like a much smaller needle size. Uh, I think this was done on three millimeter needles. So yeah, but I love this yarn. I always recommend it. And the, the, the colorway is, is really nice. Like the little motifs are so, so, so cute. And like I said, I really want to steal some of those um, charts from the book and then plug them into patterns that I actually like and wear. I think that's all there is to say about this hat. And the next project, oh, I'm so excited. It's the Mercedes sweater by Petite Knit. And it's also made with yarn that I bought at the Oxford Yarn store. So this is Sandless Garn Petite Knit Double Sunday. And I use the colorway Dusty Rouge and Almond. And I've never worn this before because I only recently blocked it. I finished this in a bit more than two weeks, which is insane. So I'll, I'll get it. So here's the beauty. You can see it's got that very classic stripe look that we all recognize. The color, which is double folded and the nice neck detail here. So I'll put it on and it is supposed to be oversized. And technically my size would have been small, but I made the extra small because I was worried it was going to come out way too big. Oops, so here it is. Oh yeah. Yeah, so it is definitely oversized. It was my first time doing a drop shoulder and it was an interesting drop shoulder construction actually. You have to do some short rows. I'm pretty happy with how mine came out. I don't think it's bad. Um, but the yarn is a little bit, I guess, less forgiving than if you were to use mohair, for example. Um, but yeah, really happy with the, how I picked up the stitches at the sleeves. It was something that usually doing raglans I don't have to worry about. So it was a bit um, nerve wracking, but I picked up the stitches and it turned out okay. Same for the neck. I'm really happy with that neck detail with the increases. Uh, the stripes, I tried to do jogless stripes. I don't know if they're on this side or this side. So I guess I did a good job. Um, it must be this side. Yeah, okay, so the... Yeah, so the, the, the stripes are really jogless, as you can see, it's fine. Um, I can't remember, I think I didn't carry the yarn for each stripe for like the almond color, but now I feel like I should have. I should have carried the red throughout the almond, but I cut it every time, which there's no point. But yeah, I'm really liking this. Um, just putting it on now. It's really comfy. It's um, merino. I don't think it's super wash. I like the style. It's definitely oversized, but it doesn't feel like I'm wearing like my dad's jumper or anything. Very, very stylish and trendy. I'm not happy with the color. It was something that I had agonized over for a long time, looking at, you know, other people project on Ravelry and Instagram. I knew I didn't want to do the original colors because I'm not too much of a fan of the white and navy stripe look, but maybe white and dark brown or dark brown and white um, or dark grays and whites. There were so many different options and I didn't know which ones to do, but I'm happy I went for this one, which is a little bit, a little bit more out there. And when I look at all my jumpers, this color is definitely not something that I have a lot of. I usually have greys or blues, so it's nice to have a bit of variation. And I do think I suit it. I don't think that it's too bright because it's kind of like a dusty, muted 
red clay clay color actually it looks yeah um so yeah i'll put the price of what that was because it was quite pricey i guess it, i think this was the priciest jumper i had ever made or even just the priciest knitting project i had ever made so i was so nervous so i call it my oxford sweater because of where i bought the yarn and the instructions were very nice this really confirmed the fact that I love petite knit pattern and I wanted to do more of her patterns because the instructions are really clear, detailed, straightforward and concise, no fluff. This was a very Moorish pattern because I just wanted to keep reaching the next step because you almost constantly had to switch what you were doing, you know, it's not just like mindless stocking it. Well, I guess it is once you reach the body, but to get to the body, there's so much going on and I think I picked up the neck like early on before finishing the body so I could see what it would look like on me. But but yeah, I'm, I'm so, so chuffed with how it looks. It grew a bit in the wash, but like not too much, I guess. I will put on Ravelry like the measurements when it was unblocked and when it was blocked. I think I definitely would like to make one again, for sure. I think I'd just make one in maybe like black and white or like gray. Um, yeah, I don't think I would change anything, honestly. Like the fit is, is perfect. The stripes are perfect. Some people have made it cropped, but yeah. Oh, this is so nice. Yeah, I definitely want to be wearing this more. Oh, actually one modification that I did was that, um, I think she calls for the rib to be made in the same needle size as you do the body, but for both the sleeves and the hem. But I thought that would look quite clunky and chunky. So what I did was I went down like one needle size. So I think I did the body on four millimeters and I did the ribbing on 3.75. And I'm really happy I did because it's not like it cinches in too much. Like there's still room in the sleeve. And if I wanted to, I could probably block this to be even more open. Because what I didn't want was like the ribbing to be thicker and bigger than the sleeve. I would like it to be flush and equal and then I could settle for it being tighter than the sleeve, but I didn't want it to be bigger than the sleeve. Uh, I think I saw some people doing twisted rib, but I, I quite like how neat this is looking in this yarn. Like I feel like the ribbing is looking quite straight already. So I think that was the only modification that I did. Okay, so the next project is also very exciting and it's also from Petite Net. So I started this at the end of August and I actually finished it two weeks later. So again, this took, this took about two weeks. The next one took about two weeks and it's the Champagne Cardigan by Petite Net. And this is so interesting because this is the reason that I put off making this video for so long because this actually wasn't finished in September. This was finished yesterday when I finally saw the buttons on. I was putting that off for so, so, so long and I don't know why it took that long. And I told myself I didn't want to record this video if the projects weren't completely finished. And I know the hats don't have their pom-poms, but it's fine. So this is the sweater and let me just say I am so glad I sewed the buttons because now I can finally wear this. So that's the champagne cardigan and I made this in double sundae from Sentinel's Garn in the color cardamom. And then the mohair is tin silk mohair in least beige, so 3021. And I saw someone do that color combination on Ravelry and I thought it was great. So it's not like the colorway almond or whipped cream that some people do where it's like really white. Mine is more of a beige. And I also made the size small for that. And I guess maybe in retrospect, I could have made extra small. So here, how she looks. And it's also oversized. So it's meant to be kind of like long sleeves, lots of positive ease. But I think it looks nice. So I'll, I'll button it for you because I can. And they're just four normal buttons. I think I got them from Wool Warehouse. They're just black. There we go. Yeah, super happy with it. Um, I guess, yes, I did the size S. It was my first cardigan. And like a lot of people, I guess I don't like purling as much as I like knitting. So I didn't let that stop me and I, I still did it. And the yoke went pretty fast, I would say. But it's just that, you know, there's not that satisfaction of when you join in the round and then it's like stocking it. Because when the yoke was finished, even though I put the sleeves on hold, which reduced a lot of stitches, I still had to go back and forth. 
But I think at some point I broke that down and broke that up and picked up the sleeves and ended the sleeves, which are in the round. Uh, and then the, the flagship thing of this project is the double knitted uh, button band. So it's a really nice detail. It's so professional. And as you can see, it's really sad. One of the reasons I'm not happy with this project is that I, I picked up a bit messily here. And you can see like holes at the button band, but like that's that's it because everything else is like really nice, uh, neat and nice. It's just at that V-neck here where I picked up at the wrong place, and it was really bothering me. And I'm I'm still sad about it. But ever since I finished it yesterday, I've actually been wearing this because it's so comforting. I am a bit sensitive to mohair, and I guess I am sensitive to this mohair. It's the tin silk. And it's right now a bit itchy on the arms, but I wouldn't say that it would make me want to take it off necessarily. It's just not as comfy as other cardigans might be if they didn't have mohair or if they had one that I liked, like Issachar or Tilia. But it's really cozy. I think if I were to make it this again, I would make it in extra small and with a different mohair. I think I could maybe make one in a dark color, like a dark gray or a black. I think a black one would be really, really nice and elegant. I think everyone should get a black cardigan. I think a lot of people are kind of like stealing this idea of a double knit like button band and then they use the instructions for this on other cardigans. I wouldn't do that because it was such a pain to make it. Like it is really rewarding at the end, but you had to pick up so many stitches and then the button band was working up so so slowly like it took as long it took as much time as, as making sleeves for example i think but it's nice i do like it i'm still i'm just upset about the the button bands but i'm happy i learned the skill of how to sew the buttons on it wasn't that hard actually the way that you um make the the holes as well is very clever and neat like it really feels like a professional item and the buttons i'm really proud of them i follow the video by kimi which makes uh, petite knit support videos and she suggests to do that technique where like you kind of raise the button as you can see it's not flush with the cardigan it like is raised and the point of that is that because the button band is so thick you want to give it that space to sit in between the button and the button band on the other side, like to get that kind of sandwich thing. I have no idea if I'm explaining this right, but that was also putting me off of, of doing this because I didn't know how to do this, but the video was fine. So I'd recommend if you're putting off sewing buttons or weaving your ends or blocking, just do it, just do it because it took me months and now I finally have this and I love it. The sleeves are a little long, but I think it just adds to the coziness. If I were to remake this in a size extra small, I probably would make the size uh, the sleeves a little bit smaller as well. But yeah, I recommend the pattern. It's it's definitely a gorgeous one. I'll put down here uh, how much this is costing. And yeah, I only finished this yesterday and I've worn it all of yesterday and like this morning. So I definitely foresee myself wearing this one a lot, despite the little oopsie on the side. Okay, so now we enter my sock era. I decided it was time for me to learn how to make socks and I'm glad I did. So I could have used a free pattern but I decided I really liked Petite Knit's style and way of explaining and I wanted something that would be really easy and versatile. So I went for the Sunday Socks by Petite Knit and I'll just show them quickly here. Up, oh, Sunday Socks. They are extremely pilly. The yarn I used was Philcolana Peruvian Highland Wool in the colorway Marzipan. I used less than two skeins, like 1.75 uh, and basically I would not recommend using that yarn because it's 100% wool and I guess I didn't really know at the time because I knew nothing about socks but you know the nylon is there for a reason in the classic sock yarn and I didn't know that there were some yarn brands that do sell DK weight sock yarns with nylon in it and this is what I would definitely buy next time. I think Sendez Garn Perfect is the alternative that she recommends and that one has nylon, I think. Um, so yeah, these have peeled incredibly and they haven't, bro they're not broken, there's no holes. There's a tiny bit of felting, I guess. And 
I really wanted to show these to you how they are, so I didn't do anything before this video to like salvage any of my knits. This is all true to shape. So this is the, the, the sock then. So as you can see, there's like so much fluff. <laughs> Uh, I guess I went with scissors one time and kind of just like took some from the bottom. The bottom is looking very neat actually, so maybe I should just go with my scissors at the top and just undo all the little things. They they look really bad now, but they're so comfy. I wear them all the time. Like they're literally my house socks, which I just put on after a shower, keep my feetsies warm, wear them to bed. I wear them all the time. I guess the toe is where it has like felt it the most and I can feel it on the inside as well. They're a bit too long in addition to that, which is also why I wouldn't wear them. They're very bulky. They're so nice. They're so comfy. They were done so, so fast. They took two days. So I guess one day per sock, which is really nice. And for a first pair of sock, I was really happy. I think I made this bit a bit shorter because it was very boring to do, first of all. Like you just work down in the ribbing and because uh, it's going to be folded anyway, it doesn't really matter, I guess, how long you make it. I'm happy with the size of it, like, they're not too too large, they're too long at the foot, so I could easily remedy that. And it's got like a heel flap and gusset, which was a really great skill to pick up, because then I could do that for all my socks in the future. So yeah, if you've never done socks, I definitely recommend that pattern. There might be some free ones out there that would give you the same look, because this is just a 2x2 two two rib sock with a stockinette, like, bottom. But yeah, I guess nothing else to say, just it, it made me really happy to have learned a new skill. And this is, this is my most worn item of all of these that I'm showing you today. And I'll put the price of these down in the on the screen. So the next thing I did was to make more socks. So I bought the book 52 Weeks of Socks by Lina, I think, and uh, decided to go look for some patterns that I liked from that book. And I made a pair of shorties. They're called Vervain. So here they are. So it's a shorty with a nice lace pattern on the side. They've got that little like twisted rib and slip stitch heel. They're um, symmetrical, so it, it's two different patterns. And they're really nice. They're made with Philcolana Arweta in Delicate Orchid. Orchid. Uh, and I actually have not worn these for no other reason that I think they're way too beautiful. I would just feel bad putting my foot in these. I was doing them on Magic Loop. I think I was struggling a little bit on this side. You can see like the tension is not great. But then on this side, it's fine. So I think you really can get used to it. I struggle when patterns give instructions for double pointed needles and I have to mentally adjust them to magic loop, but it's just something that I've got to work on. So I think I should just be less shy and I should just wear these because they're beautiful. I did try them on and they do fit. I made them in 225 needles, uh, which I think is what I prefer is a size one. I don't really think I would change anything. Um, but yeah, all the details again will be on the Ravelry page for all of these projects in case I'm forgetting things, which I'm sure I do because those projects are so old now. Um, well, this was finished in September and actually th these took two days. So again, one each. So definitely make shorties if you're wanting a quick rewarding project. That one actually like the lace starts off immediately at the same time as you doing the, the rib. So that was quite interesting. Next, we have the intersection socks, which is also from the 52 weeks of sock book. And it's a cable pattern. And I, I didn't like doing that. I didn't like doing cables. And they were also toe up, which I didn't like either. This is also Filcolana Arweta in the colorway Light Truffle size one, made on 2.5, and you have to use a bigger size because the cables, I guess, are quite tight. And I do feel that when I put these on, it's a little hard to get on my foot, but once they're there, it's fine. I'm not too sure what the heel is called, maybe a short row heel or something, but it's not a, a flap and gusset, which was fun to learn a new construction. I'm glad I learned toe up, but I definitely prefer 
top down. The cuff as well is always a, a big problem when you make them toe up, it's like it flares, um, depending on the cast off that you use. Because you want to keep the stretchiness, but you don't want it to flare. And I'll put how much this was uh, below. And I don't know if I would make them again, because like I said, I didn't really enjoy the process of making the cables. It took forever to motivate me to make the second one. And I didn't like the process of making them toe up. There's nothing wrong with the pattern and I'm glad I made them. I have not worn them either because again, I'm just so proud of them and they're so nice, but I'm gonna try to wear my socks more this year because that's the point of making them, isn't it? Okay, so the next project is the Louvre sweater by Petite Net. And I really, really like this one. I started it mid-September and finished mid-October. I made the size extra small and I'm glad I did. So I'll show it to you here. I made it in Sendesgar Pier Gint in Entrasit, color 1088. It's really nice, it's really nice and drapey, which blocking really helps with that yarn because otherwise it's really rustic and, and rough and tight. And it still does feel a bit that way, but blocking helps. So I'll put it on now and it is very wooly, rustic wool, so it's not for the faint of heart. Yeah, I'm really glad I went for that color. I think it's just the most beautiful dark gray, almost black, like kind of charcoal color. So it's a top-down raglan and you start with a tubular cast on, which I'd never done before. And the, um, it's kind of like the, the, the best part about this pattern is the neck, isn't it? And you got that nice um, flattering shape of it on your chest. And then it's the raglan, which is, is quite deep and sleeves, which slightly taper down to a long rib and a long deep rib at the bottom. So, yeah, I've not worn it that many times. I've worn it a few times, but it is quite itchy. I guess the same way now on my arms that the mohair was itching with the cardigan earlier. But apart from that, like, it's fine. I think it was really, really warm. I wore it once out with a friend, but then I had to take it off because I was just overheating in it. But you know, places always put up the heating too high when you're out. Um... I would definitely make this pattern again, like 100%. I think I, I want to try it in a different yarn. Uh, I think people have had success with Drops Nepal. No, Drops Lima. So people have made this in Drops Lima and they, they really liked it. Or I could also see myself getting the new colorway of Pure Ghent, the one that has tweed in it and copy petite knit and make this one in tweed. Because this has such a look with the elegant black turtleneck, like mock neck thing. But imagine how this would look in a light color it would change everything. But then I don't know if I want to make them both in pure gint because the reason I don't wear this one as much is because of the yarn. So maybe I should just find another Tweedy color in a different yarn, maybe not drops, but something else. Um, I'd recommend the pattern, it was really easy. I think there's a free one from Espace Trico called The Classic, which looks really similar. So maybe you could do that one instead if you wanted. I really like it. I really like the length of the sleeves. I think I nailed it because it's like, you can pull them up if you want, but like the rib kind of settles itself where it's meant to be. Um, it's like a tubular bind off on everything. So you got the tubular bind on, the tubular cast on and the tubular bind off. It's just a really nicely finished piece of work. Uh, and I don't think I made any modifications. I'll put here below how much this cost to do. And I don't think I made any modifications to the pattern. I'm saying here in my notes on Ravelry apparently, that if I was doing this again, I would maybe make it a bit more oversized and longer in a light gray. So like a light gray or like a tweed, like I said, I just make it even more oversized and, and floaty and big. I think longer is what I wanted to do, but I think this is fine. Yeah, I never know when to stop knitting. I don't know about you. Hi everyone, it's just uh, to say that I've decided to split the video in half. So this is the end of part one. I hope that you enjoyed it so far. The next video will be around the same amount of time. So uh, wait for that. Uh, thank you so much for watching this first video. It was really nice to sit down and chat with you all. And I really hope to see you soon for part two. Stay tuned, bye.